The air of imaginary cause. To start from the dream onto a certain sensation. The result, for example, of a distant cannon shot. A cause is subsequently foisted. Often a whole little novel in which precisely the dreamer is the chief character. The sensation, meanwhile, continues to persist as a kind of resonance. It waits, as it were, until the cause creating drive permits it to step into the foreground. Now no longer as a chance occurrence, but as meaning. The cannon shot enters in a casual way, in an apparent inversion of time. That which comes later, the motivation, is experienced first, often with a hundred details which pass like lightning. The shot follows. What has happened? The ideas endangered by a certain condition have been misunderstood as a cause of that condition. We do just the same thing, in fact, when we are awake. Most of our general feelings, every sort of restraint, pressure, tension, explosion in the play and counterplay of our organs, likewise and especially the condition of this nervous sympathicus, excite our cause-creating drive. We want to have a reason for feeling as we do, for feeling well or feeling ill. It never suffices us simply to establish the mere fact that we do. We acknowledge this fact, become conscious of it, only when we have furnished it with a motivation of some kind. The memory which in such a case becomes active without our being aware of calls up earlier states of a similar kind and the casual interpretations which have grown out of them, not their casualties. To be sure, the belief that these ideas, the accompanying occurrences in the consciousness, were causes is also brought up by the memory. Thus there arises an habituation to a certain casual interpretation which in truth obstructs and even prohibits the investigation of the cause.